Okay, we're talking about Sufi Muslim. We're talking about Allah. And I want to share, nobody's saying for you to believe anything. That's not what we're here. We're just here to take a look at the way some other people think and the way some other people see things. And we're looking at Sufi, S-U-F-I, Muslim, and Sufi Muslim is a mystical Muslim. Not one who's a fundamentalist, not one who lives by the letter, but one who lives by the spirit and follows the spirit. And that's very much in keeping with the biblical principles of Paul, who said, be a minister of the spirit, not of the letter, because the letter kills. So let's look at Ahmad Khulusi, who gives us some information about Sufi Muslim and Allah. And let me show you something which is the basis of Islam, okay? It is La Salahe I L A H E and the last word is Ilala. I L L A L L A H. That is the basis of Muslim. And it means there is no God, there is only Allah. That's what it means. There is no God, there is only Allah. La means there is no. That's what it means, la. There is no. Ilahe means God. Okay? Ilahe means God. A being to be worshipped. Thus, la ilahe means there is no being to be worshipped. Now this is going to get very interesting and there's a reason. And watch where this goes and, and, and I think that you who are home will learn something beautiful from this, as will we here. Next is Ilah La. Ilah means only Allah. There is no God, there is no being to be worshipped. There is only Allah. Okay? Now, Allah Halusi states that Ira, right here, right here, makes it clear that it can only be interpreted as only Allah. You hear it misinterpreted as much of the things you hear misinterpreted from the Bible, you hear it interpreted as there is no God but Allah. Allah says, no, no, that is not what this says. It says, there is no God, there is only Allah. Because what he is concerned about is if you say there is no God but Allah, you are saying Allah is a God, and he said Allah is not a God. But what, is, what is being said here in La Ilaha Illallah is that there is only unity. There is only a oneness of all things. And of course that's what Jesus said in John 17 verses 20 to 21, I pray that they all may be one, as you and I are one. So that would be la ilahe ilala, a unity of all things together. Now Amar Hamusi takes us to examine something. And let's look at this word. Everybody look at this word before I erase it, and the word is worship. Okay? So I want I want I want to erase this, that the word, I want worship, and then we'll take the other word and we'll say serve. And that's what he wants to compare. Worship and serve. And it's a serious error that we make here between these two words, worshiping and serving. Now let's take the word worship, and this is what we have done. And most of us have come through the fundamental aspects of religion, of whatever religion. And what do we have as worship? A God exists on some planet somewhere, and you perform various actions for this God, and you're trying to get this God to be nice to you. So you do things hoping that this God will be nice. You pray, you fast, you do all this stuff so that you'll get this God who lives on this planet to be nice to you. That's worshiping God. That's what we've always done. And, and in fact, you go in the church, let's all worship God. Or you'll see the sign in the church, worship service at such and such a time. It means there is a God someplace else and you're going to try to make him like you so that he doesn't throw you in the pit by doing something. That's worship. Now, Ahmed tells us that serving means acting in accordance with your purpose. You have a purpose. 
you act in accord with your purpose. In other words, you know what you're supposed to do. You have your, your business. You know how you must serve your customers. You know what you must do. You do it. Wherever you work, whatever you do, you have your work at your business. You know what you must do in order to please your boss. And you do what you're supposed to do because you know what you're supposed to do. This is very interesting and very good. So a person then who knows what they're supposed to do is serving God. A person who doesn't know is worshiping. All right? Interesting. Very interesting. From the Quran, there's a part called Surah Al-Fatiha. It says, To you do we serve. We fulfill our functions according to the program and purpose in our creation. Once we learn what we're supposed to do, then we do it. Then we're serving. So, in other words, it is important to follow that which is within yourself and not become involved in religion. Because if you're going to be involved in religion, you're going to worship. If you are going to follow within yourself, you're going to serve. Now, it's a big difference. And that's the part. And look at, look at here. The world is falling apart. Because everybody is worshiping their gods and fighting with each other as to how you should worship instead of serving the common purpose of all, which is the oneness and the unity of God. Is this, is this good? See, is there learning something from the Muslims tonight that we didn't know? Quran 1784 says, Everyone acts according to his own disposition. In other words, the manner in which he was fashioned. This is servitude. Acting out your true inner plan that's designed for you. And the Bible speaks of this. Each one of you is created differently. Each one of you has a different personality. Each one of you has a different... So that's one of the things where people say, how should I meditate? You find that. Just discipline yourself to stay still and let meditation find you. It is none of my business how you meditate. And if I tell you how to meditate, I may be taking you away from your own design and your own purpose. So it is to be individual and find your pathway. Not to belong to anything. Okay? And this is what... This is, I'll show you a description in the Bible that, that says this. Go to page... 925, and look for just a minute in the book of Romans, at Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 and verse... Let's look at Romans chapter 9, verse 21. You see, on page 925, what does the Apostle Paul say? He says, because the creature... I've got the wrong one. Romans chapter 9, okay, 9, verse 21. Here we go. Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and to another unto dishonor? In other words, each person is created as an individual, totally unique from the other, and here we get religions and churches that try to change everybody to make everybody the same, and here's a very scripture saying everybody is uniquely different. And that the creation, the creator, nature, God, call it 